Nolan Nyker's Sonakim system has won the UK Space Agency's Aqua Lunar Challenge, an innovation that could help astronauts purify water from lunar ice. And he has joined us in the Biz News studio. Hi, Nolan. So nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, well, this challenge is an honor. So uh, what exactly is your innovation and how does it work? Well, the 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 task we were given was to um, develop a system to purify frozen water in the South Polar region of the moon. And this has been looked at in the past uh, by agencies such as NASA, but no one's, no one's come up with a definitive solution. So it's still a, uh, considered an open problem to be solved. Uh, I proposed using a novel approach to water treatment called uh, stoner chemical degradation. So the sono part means it's uh, the use of sound uh, to degrade contaminants in liquid water. And this, this formed the core of the entire process. So you were competing against professors from major universities in the UK for the same challenge, but your design won. Yes. Uh, so this has uh, surprised me <laughs> a little. Uh, there were many teams competing, so um, over 70 applications, 30 of which were considered uh, sufficiently complete, um, uh, and 10 teams uh, considered as finalists and given seed funding to develop the technology further. So I was one of those 10 teams, and then out of, out, out of those 10, uh, this, this team has won the entire challenge. So tell us a little bit more about the Aqua Lunar Challenge. What exactly is it? So it is um, a 1.2 uh, million pound challenge uh, being run in uh, between the Space Agency in the UK and that in Canada. So there's two parallel tracks. Uh, there's a UK track and a Canadian track, and there are teams competing in both countries. So we're, we're competing separately. Uh, so the UK teams are competing with UK teams and the same for Canada. Uh, and within the UK track, um, my company has won the challenge. Uh, there's a Canadian track, which is still going on. Uh, so they have more rounds to do, but the total value of the challenge is still the same. Uh, it's just structured uh, differently. The UK track has concluded. Um, and this was this was the first challenge competition run by um, run in the UK by the space agency. I've seen many of these challenges in the past. Um, they have tended to be run by uh, organizations like NASA or the X Prize Foundation, and it's 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 a way to spur innovation. So the topic that's proposed is considered um, unsolved. Uh, so it's a challenge and it's open to anyone. It doesn't have to be uh, a person or an entity from a particular sector. Uh, it could be uh, the everyday person, uh, someone tinkering around in their garage who thinks they have a sufficiently good idea and can enter the challenge competition with the, with the goal of winning a big pot of money at the end. So what happens to your invention now? Um, well, so the, it, it's, it was considered by the judges to be uh, sufficiently promising uh, such that I was awarded the uh, financial prize at the end, which will allow me to continue to develop that technology uh, for water purification on the moon, as well as um, a few spin-out technologies I've identified on the way. So I've identified two spin-out technologies for space application and two for terrestrial application, which have nearer term uh, product potential. So the potential is to generate revenue in the shorter term, uh, because as you would guess, uh, developing a system to purify water on the lunar surface is a longer term goal with, with um, mm. a, a, a later payoff for a company. Uh, and I've got to keep this company going in the shorter term. So there are applications on Earth that you're working on? There are. So the challenge uh, of purifying water on the moon um, is to develop a compact system 
that uses low power uh, with minimal maintenance requirements and operating in a harsh environment. And there are niche applications on Earth where a derivative of this technology would be uh, sufficiently interesting to develop a product and sell that product into the terrestrial market. Um, so I'm currently working with uh, one potential customer for an effluent treatment device, um, and I've identified another um, potential application, uh, which uh, I will pursue further uh, this year. Well, tell us more about your company. Um, how many people um, are working with you? So it's a three-year-old uh, research and development focused entity. I, I started um, initially as a consultancy, uh, helping early stage startups and sometimes larger companies get from idea to first prototype. So I've been doing this for a number of different technologies across different sectors, uh, including the space sector. And I would, I, I would just take an idea from concept all the way to first prototype um, for, for these other companies. And it got to a point where I thought that um, I, could, I could actually do this for myself as well. Uh, it, it's been successful enough for them that they were able to go off and raise uh, millions of pounds in funding just off the back of these first prototypes. So this was the first uh, attempt at developing a technology for this particular company. Um, and it's been pretty su successful. We've had a lot of interest in the spin-out technologies. Uh, so companies have um, contacted me expressing an interest in collaboration, especially expressing an interest in, um, in acquiring uh, technology sh should it be to developed further in the future. Uh, it, it's it's been a one person company for the last three years where I've operated with uh, a regular a team of subcontractors who I've who I've know from working in different industries over the past twenty years. But it's at the point where I have more work than I can handle on my own. So I've uh, I've got two job adverts open, published, uh, and looking to grow grow the company. So also exciting and that you're almost doing doing this on your own. Um, so are you looking for funding or does it depend on which company, you know, takes up your technology? So this is a this is the very traditional approach to to business where I am operating on a revenue generating model. Uh, so uh, it, typically startups have an idea uh, and look look around for funding. Uh, for from an investor, and uh, a large part of the early work is just trying to find that funding. Uh, I've had the, I've approached it in a different way, where I have services that are on offer, so technical consulting services, and that has brought in enough uh, revenue uh, and uh, enough profit that I've been able to reinvest that profit into internal uh, developments. And together with the Aqualuna Challenge prize money, uh, I've got a certain runway to to keep going like this. But you know, I'm always open to uh, talking to investors. Uh, I don't think they were at the at the point where um, I could put together a strong enough business case to um, to to have that uh, have a meaningful discussion with investors yet. But we're we're getting to that point and. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try keep going uh, with this revenue generating business model, uh, sort of a bootstrap approach. Well, you're originally from South Africa, from Chatsworth. So, how did you get to starting this company in the UK? I've worked in a number of different industries uh, in South Africa and outside of South Africa, and it was always um, R and D focused work. So, I would, um, I would come up with ideas or work on uh, the company's ideas and develop them further to the first prototype. So I've always been doing this kind of work. It's just the benefits have always accrued to the employer. Um, and after changing, so changing industries and fields a number of times, so I can, I can list them out. So I've worked in the petrochemical industry, the nuclear industry, in astronomy, in um, household consumer electronics, in the space industry, in the cosmetics industry. So it's, for me, the there's always that thread of science, 
engineering and technology that's connected all of these dots. Um, so it's always been related. And I like operating um, it, on problems uh, um, where there are no established solutions, where it's, it's not quite clear how to go about solving the problems. Um, so you're essentially starting from a blank sheet of paper and trying to try to do something that somebody else finds too difficult or unsolvable. So about three years ago, uh, I got to a point in my career where I thought that um, it's going to be really difficult to me, for me to to fit within a, a, a particular industry or a particular job role. I was looking at job adverts and I could not sort of squeeze myself into any of these boxes anymore because uh, I'm sort of uh, mid mid career and I've worked in too many places to to have um, to call myself a particular kind of engineer or scientist. So I was uh, I was at a point where in order to to sort of continue operating in this way uh, in this interdisciplinary way where I could just just solve interesting problems that have market potential, I had to I was sort of forced to do it on my own. Um, and I tried working at a startup company first uh, to try and uh, just dip my toe into that world. Um, and after two years at the start at the startup company, so an alter startup company, I thought, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, I could see a few ways I would do it differently. Um, I'm going to just I'm just going to jump in the deep end and try it out myself. So. With uh, kids to feed, a mortgage to pay for, only one one short contract uh, that uh, available to me, I, I formed the company, and uh, it's been yes, yeah, been going going for three years. Uh, it's been a partly a surprise to me that this business model worked, but it, it's been working. Uh, so I don't don't question it too much. Uh, and it's uh, the, yeah, the revenue has been growing steadily over those three years, to a point where I can now uh, hire hire some additional people to help me and see where this all goes. Well, any new ideas brewing? Any new inventions you're thinking of? I always have <laughs> a backlog of uh, ideas uh, that uh, I could work on. I uh, could work on. Uh, should I have the uh, time uh, available and hopefully taking on these new employees will allow me to work on more of them but there's always uh, partially completed projects uh, and there are quite a few sitting around me now though the camera's blurred um, that uh, are ready for uh, the new employees to work on um, so I've, I've got lots of ideas and uh, I try to I try to focus where I can on getting things to prototype, getting them to a certain level of maturity before moving on to the next one. But um, I need to figure out how to work on in more in parallel uh, across all of these ideas. And growing the company has become uh, essential now. You sound to me like a real entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lolan. Thank, thank you so much for speaking to us and, and good luck. And I hope that, that this prize opens many doors for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.